Hello and a very warm welcome back to Hughes Nursery. And we're here in the solar tunnel and I thought what I'd do, which could be quite interesting, is show you my setup for propagating and seed starting, specifically annual vegetable seeds. So it's just after mid-March, we're entering the end of the month and there are loads of seedlings all behind you, which you'll see later on, or right now. And even though May is my favourite month, March is just a fantastic month to see all that growth. So I wanted to show you how I start seeds and maybe you do things very similar, but maybe there's a couple of things which you'll see in this video which you can take away and apply in your own growing area. So the first thing is to have a potting bench. And this my dad actually made out of just some old boards and it's just very sturdy. This has been going for maybe about five or six years now. And it's just a really nice area to store the compost. So this is just some uh, multi-purpose peat-free compost, which I use. You don't actually, I never use seed compost. Um, the reason why is because I feel that this is too expensive and I have really good results for just multi-purpose compost, even if it's finer seeds like lettuce, which are growing through fine. And then what I have over here, this table is actually very clean for you. Usually it is uh, full of junk, but I cleaned it up just for this video. I always have this box here and it, as you can see, it says unfinished seeds. So it's actually very rare for me to plant a whole seed packet. Or if I need to plant a whole seed packet, I'll need to start a second. So I've always got seeds spare. And then what I'll do is if I feel like there's a gap or I want to sow something, I can have a look through and find what I need and it's just really easy to hand and another thing which is always really important is the correct labeling so we've got a couple of pots here these are old labels um, so like this says mixed salad so I can reuse this for another mixed salad this is made out of yogurt pots but I also have newer labels which I just get all the time as, as presents in this this pot here and then I've always got a pen and a pencil, at least one of each, so I can label things correctly. So everything that I have is really close proximity just to make it more efficient. Another thing which is vital for starting seeds is to have the right pots and trays. So again, they're very close proximity to where I'm doing the seed sowing. So at the bottom here, I've got all sorts of things in here. I've got root trainers, which are excellent for things like broad beans. I've just got loads of pots here, even old coffee pots, and they're all just kind of stacked away. I don't keep it too tidy, but I know that they're all down there. And then things like all the cardboard rolls as well. So very easily, I can just come down and get exactly what I need. And you can see here, I've got a big, big tower of loads of different trays which i don't use as much now these more plastic ones i use these ones here because um as you can see these are solid and i get these from a company called Containerwise, and there's a link down below in the video description but i've never been more impressed before with using trays and it's just the quality these can last up to 15 years, maybe even longer, and they're UV treated. So these are deep rooted, so these are fantastic for peas and beans. And then I like these module cells for other things. So for example, at the moment, peas can also grow well. And these are actually very ready for transplanting. They've got a bit ahead of me. So those are growing well. And then I grow things like salad crops. So this is Mitsuna which is coming along nicely. Now, of course, when it comes to sowing seeds and seedlings, a fundamental part of that is watering. So what we always have is a hose, and this hose is actually dedicated to the solar tunnel. We've got another much longer hose, which is dedicated to the outdoors. So I always know that within about two meters at most, I've got an instant source of water. And there are a few different ways that I water. I use this actually, it's a tiny watering can, and this is ideal if you've got really small seedlings. So up here, I've got these lettuce just poking through. And if I use anything with a, a high force of water, like that is just gonna destroy the lettuce. So what I do instead 
is I just fill this up a bit and then I'll go around and give them a light water and that doesn't displace them. Another thing that I have is this, it's been a bit broken and bashed. We don't actually use it for the purpose it was created for because usually you just stick this in the ground, stick that in and you'll get water, but I'm not gonna make myself wet. But what, what we find really useful with this is once seedlings have developed nicely, it makes a really nice way of watering. And what I'll also do at the end of the video is do a bit of a run through of sowing some seeds in a module tray just so you can see exactly how I like to do it. I also use things like hoses, these work really well and of course they're watering cans but I like to keep things quite small when I'm watering because that gives a lot more attention to detail. Now if you're experiencing really hot weather or you're sowing and it's perhaps something more like June or July and it's getting a lot warmer and drier. Let's pretend that I've just watered this and actually in here I've sown beetroot. One way to stop the evaporation of water and I, I saw this idea um, by a guy called James Prigioni from one of his videos about making carrots germinate better is to actually cover it. So what it, this does is two things. The first thing and I'll come on to the second one later which is mice the first thing that this does though is reduce evaporation. So you, you don't need to worry about the soil drying out. All you need to do is once a day, have a quick look underneath. And if you can see seedlings, that's when you'll remove this. So that's just a really easy way of reducing the need to water. The next thing is knowing where to put your seeds and the seed trays and the pots. And one of the limitations of growing undercover is a lack of space for storing things, especially if you want to start growing things in the raised beds. So what I'm doing here is utilizing vertical space. So we use a shelving system, and this is actually a really effective way of putting a lot of food in a really small confined space. Now this isn't enough, so I've had to do other things which we'll come on to later, um, but I just wanted to outline something that we've always had an issue with, and that's mouse problems. Now I envy the people who can go into their garden and plant direct broad bean seeds, and they don't seem to get any problems, but we have a real problem with mice here. So you might be able to see, these, these are the sweet peas and uh, these are the, actually the only ornamentals I'm probably growing this year, mainly because the smell is amazing. Um, but I'm surprised that these many came through because I came up one morning and the mice had just seemed to decimate the whole thing. So it's a good thing that I planted more than one in each one. And the same with the broad beans. So you can see we're missing broad beans and they just came through. And I, I think some of these have actually recovered somehow. So what I'm doing is this is a higher shelf, so mice are a lot less likely to reach the higher shelf. And I've never had any problems here. I was just silly and forgot about the problems and had these things like the peas and beans and also the spinach on lower shelves. So that's what I'm doing on the lower shelves of things which aren't as problematic when it comes to mice. For example, the Mitsuna here, we've got radish, and the lettuce, mice aren't interested in these because the seeds aren't as big. So that's what I've had to do to adapt with the mouse problems. What I find with the shelves is when it comes to watering, it's actually a bit of a pain because you're trying to reach in and especially if you've got seedlings quite high, it's hard to get any kind of good accuracy with the watering. And also I was running out of space because these seedlings aren't really actually designed to go inside here indoors. And yes, I should be utilizing this a bit more, but that will be another video. These seedlings are going outdoors and because it's quite a large garden and I'm trying to start a lot of things early, I've got to really look at how I can maximize the space. So this is actually going to eventually be where the tomatoes are growing. And I was watching one of Charles Dowding's videos and you can see the footage at the moment. He built a, and this is what inspired me to build this. He used four fence posts and kind of put a pallet over the top of the fence post and he had this perfect amazing table where he could put a lot of his modules on and I saw it and I instantly knew that that was what was missing from the polytunnel because I've got all this space 
but I don't want to put it on the ground because that is where I can get mouse problems. And yes, I know they can climb up these, but these are just a bit more developed. And also when it comes to watering, it's a lot easier and I'll demonstrate it to you now. Slide this in like that. And it's so much easier because I haven't got any shelves in the way. And another thing is what's great about this is it's a really nice height. So I don't have to constantly bend down or reach up high to get things. It's literally a perfect height for me. I can just walk in, grab the tray and I can leave. It's as simple as that. Now what I did um, was I used just some extra nails and two pallets and it's really simple. It's a bit wobbly, but then it'll stop wobbling either side. And I know this is sturdy enough to hold it. So if you want to see Charles Dowding's video and where he uses his design, there's a link down below in the video description for that. This is how I like to sow my seeds using module trays. And the first step is to just fill it with some compost. Then I just use my fingers to just press down the compost and top it up again. Then, especially if the compost is quite dry, give it a water. And I like to do this because once the seeds are in, water like that can displace them. I then bring it back onto the potting table and I'm gonna be sowing some more spinach today. So I'm just using my fingers or you could use a pencil or dibber to create some holes. And then I've got the seeds here. I'll place initially, just depending on how many seeds I have, two or three in a hole. And if a hole doesn't seem deep enough, you can make the adjustments required. Once I've sown the seeds, I'll just gently cover them over again. And because there's all that moisture from pre-watering and because it's quite an overcast day, I don't need to water these anymore. But what I am going to do is I'm going to get a sheet of cardboard, place a couple of stones on the top so I know I don't need to water these until I see shoots appearing. And that's how simple it is to sow a module seed tray. I hate to say it, but unfortunately my propagation setup is incomplete because we did have a cold frame, but it, it's fallen apart and I've cleared this area and I had a text notification today to say that I've got a new cold frame coming and we're going to repurpose the old door of the old cold frame for another one. But this is the final stage when we have a cold frame because the important thing, unless it's really hardy things, is to harden off a lot of your seedlings. So if they're a bit more tender, so things like your courgettes or anything like that, and you want to transplant them, I'd like to put them into a cold frame during the nights so they can begin to acclimatize to the cooler night temperatures. So that is the final stage. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video about my propagation setup. It's just a bit of a bish bash bosh of showing you the whole process. Um, hopefully you've taken away something, but I'd love to know what you do for your propagation setup with sowing seeds. So do let me know down below in the comments and I'll see you again very soon in another video. Goodbye.